Hi, Sag. This is your homework family reading. I'm learning to get my bell rubbed to a specific spot. <laughs> this is your homework family reading for all Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign for July 1st through the 15th. Well, <laughs> I asked Spirit after they told me who I was reading for. I was asking them where you were at, what's going on in your mind, and I'm never going to ask that again. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean any disrespect to you guys, but you guys are such on-the-move people. I couldn't even keep up with what Spirit was giving me. I was like, okay, okay, change that subject. I was like, let's try to do it from a different angle because I was just getting so much. I was like, none of this makes sense. And they just started giving me so much information. Now, <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. I mean, it was like going over a hill and then all of a sudden opening up like a vacation door looking out into you know like like at the beach looking out into the beach over the water into paradise then it was this and then it was that and I was like wow okay never mind <laughs> I mean and that actually doesn't sound bad at all except for I couldn't keep up with any of what they were, I was like, no, okay, change the direction, because that's the wrong direction. All right, with that being said, once I did start to get, maybe, I kind of need to get to some of my notes. Are you okay? Y'all know Neptune. <laughs> As I did finally start to get, you know, to where I could understand what in the world they were saying. First off, what they give me, I mean, as soon as I knew that I was talking about you. You guys are the half horse, half man, the archer. Not this month, you're not. <laughs> Spirit put took the horse away, and what they put was you on a unicycle, like on fire, like you were just plowing with the archer still in its hand. This is how I knew it was you because of the archer. I had to go back and ask. But this is what they're giving me, is your energy is just so much on the move. Like, go, go, go. And then with your fire energy, you know, you're just, you know, already gone in some sense. Um, but then they give me the bird soaring, which is you trying to rise to the next level. I mean, that's what you Sagittarius do. You want to understand everything. You want to understand it. You want to get it. You want to know about it. And then you're ready for the next thing. But I'm giving it in blue energy, like you're, like you're trying to rise, you're trying to move up, you're trying to move on in some way, and blue energy is saying for courageous and tranquility for me. However, that's when it shifts. You know what? Where's my book? That's when it shifts, and that's when it threw me off, and I don't think, obviously, this cannot be for every single Sagittarius on the planet, but for those who it is that I'm connecting with, I'm going to give you the energy. Then, um, they, they more or less connect with the wolf tattoo that I have, <coughs> and the wolf tattoo is howling at the bone, and what's going on is, is I feel like a howling at the moon or scratching away on my back. So this is definitely getting into your emotions, to your depths of your soul and yourself. And the wolf is howling at it. So this is a healing. This I feel like this is also partially in some form cutting cords. Because for me, the wolf typically is protective, but it's also a healing energy. With it being presented with the moon, is talking about some of your unconscious or subconscious, some of your hidden energies from yourself. This is the depths of who and what you are, and from a darker aspect in some points. Because this is the wolf, wolf howling at the moon. It's releasing, it's surrendering, it's letting go. This is the way we interpret it. But then I'm given also what looks like a cross. And it may be given, it depends on who you are. And like I said, if this, if this goes with you, then run with it. If it doesn't, throw it out. But what I'm being given is a cross and, you know, like, like a cross. But then it shifts into an X. Which automatically 
made me think of a couple things. It's just the way that it comes into my head. So the cross could be a symbol in some form of your spirituality, depending on who and what you are, how you see or view the cross in general. It may also deal with, I felt like X marks the spot. But then it also made me think of the runes. And it felt like I was also meant to come to the runes. So I may be reading for a couple different people, and this is the interpretations. I don't really know. I'm just giving you what I'm given. X in the X itself, as far as a rune goes, would be Jebo. This is the gift and the gifting price. This is the exchange of fire. It focuses on hospitality and generosity. Things both given and received. It is mer uh sorry, it is it may indicate someone who is someone who is somehow controlled or kept hostage by a situation or by people. And the only reason you would be feeling controlled or or kept hostage by a situation or people is because, unfortunately, you're allowing it. You're, if that's the case, it would be because you're not standing in, standing up for yourself. You're not doing what you need to do if that's the situation. But it can also reveal someone who just, who came into their gifts. So it's one or the other. Came into their gifts or finding their magical exchange in general. It is a symbol that shows something must be given for where something has been received. Um, or where something will be returned for where something was received. It also shows where it has been offered for where it has been received. Basically, this is the give and the take. This is the sacrifice and the generosity. This is... Many people call Jebo the marriage, but see, I don't want to give it the idea of marriage, like getting married. For some, it may be, but this is like the give and the take. This is the exchange. It is the gift and the gifting price of whatever it is that this is talking about. It is um, the gift and its obligations, exactly. It is hospitality or the hostage. And it speaks to you also of shared energy. It could be serene energy. It could also be dealing with sexual energy, sexual magic, sexual exchange, um, sacrifice agreements, the honoring of contracts, one's given word, both giving and receiving. But most importantly, when we get into what Jebo means, life itself was a gift and remember that I feel like that needed to be said in some cases that hmm. I, I, it's just something else that they just told me it feels like that needed to be said in some cases because of the situation of what I'm feeling next because then they're telling me it has a lot to do with the throat chakra either it's not being used properly or it's being overused. So the throat chakra doesn't only... Sp and this has to do with Mercury going retrograde. The throat chakra does not just speak of us how we express ourselves. But it also speaks of how we listen to others and allow them to express themselves. So it could be give and take of both in this area. But I am also feeling like there's something in the head. The third eye, the crown, this ascending area that could be moving you up. I feel like it feels heavy, like you're fighting it. And I feel like over the heart, I'm seeing what looks like a crab. And what when I think of a crab, because it's coming into this area of me, I feel like it's being pushed in, like pushed in. So the crab typically for me speaks to us of armor. Because the crab has to come out of its shell. So its shell is armor. And I feel like you're putting so much armor on and pushing it in. What I feel like most of this energy is coming down to is either you are running at top speed. Away from something or towards something. And while you're doing it, I feel like you're stuck in nostalgia. You're stuck in, in habits that, you ha that you're not changing. Or that you hadn't been changing until now. I feel like you're stuck in nostalgia, running as fast as you can, either towards or away from something, trying to protect yourself. And 
It's coming from habits and patterns of what you've known and how you've taken care of things in the past, but it's not serving you anymore. And you're fighting, acknowledging it's not serving you anymore. And something about that has to change. Now, that is basically what I'm getting. Now, Spirit is also pointing out to me, Venus in astrology is moving into Cancer. As soon as I brought up the uh, crab, Spirit brought up Venus is moving into Cancer on July 3rd. Now, for you, Sagittarius is, let me find that. I don't know why I needed to go there. I could have figured it out anyway. But Cancer is... Your eighth house. Sensitivities moving into your eighth house. Hmm. Moving into your eighth house. And it's cancer. Uh, it, the eighth house is your rules of your relationships. Let me find. I like to, I have all the information. I already know the information, but I like to make sure I pull it out when I do the video so that I don't miss anything because it may be important. What this word says for you may not be that big of a deal, but if I mention this one, it may. So I go back to my notes. So the eighth house is the rules of the relationships. It's the relation, what the relationship owns and it was responsible for. It's, it's joint efforts. It's death. It's regeneration. It's taxes. It's inheritances. It's wills. It's, um, legacies. It's the act of sex itself. It's joint efforts, bankruptcy, spouses, money, transformation, and uh, also deals with healing because the eighth house is typically ruled by Scorpio, which is birth, death, rebirth, and the mystery of that. So, anything that you care about, you have a relationship with. And what are the rules and the responsibilities in these relationships? And this feels like it has everything to do with what you may be running from or to, and what part of these patterns it feels like you not necessarily changing that aren't necessarily working for you anymore. You haven't seen that they don't serve you. Or you're starting to, but you're fighting it. And the thing is, is that ha that energy where Venus, because that's why I said Spirit pointed that out to me, that Venus is moving into Cancer on the 3rd. And for you, that's its 8th house. But it's in opposition with your 2nd house. Self-worth, self-value, self-esteem. It's in opposition with how you create your money, how you spend your money, what you value, your hidden talents, and your movable properties, such as like a phone, your car, not the home, but movable properties, things that are important to you, how you gain and spend and realize what you value, including of yourself. And it feels like you're fighting what the rules are within the relationship or you're not changing the rules within these relationships and you're not actually, either you're not being joint, like joint efforts, joint resources, joint finances, joint responsibilities, and you're either doing too much or you're not doing enough in this area. And it's time that you start to see that because the proper rules, walls, and boundaries need to be shifted to help support that universal second house for you, which is where Pluto and Saturn are speaking about creating the rules, walls, and boundaries that support your self-worth, your self-value, your self-esteem, how you create and realize what you value. Now, with that being said, let me go back a second because part of this energy that was making me say when I started looking into the astrology that I felt like you were just stuck in some nostalgia habits and you weren't able to come out of it, is because there's been a T-square going on from... Mm -mm, there's been a T-square going on for you from your universal first house to your... seventh house. And it's fighting your Neptune right now, which is... Your Jupiter, it is Venus, 
and it was Neptune, and Neptune is your fourth house. So, it's the relationships are fighting what the roots are, what the home is, where your inner emotional security is, what the roots that create you to find your true, real self is, and it's been fighting yourself. It's been fighting your self-awareness. So, it feels like You've been having to take a couple steps backwards because the universe is trying to make you see something that you need to change within these relationships and how it doesn't help you, but how it's more of roots that are getting in deeper because that's where Neptune is for you. Neptune is in the home right now. And it is, like I said, it's where you find your inner emotional security. It's the true self, but it is also your karmic lesson. And I feel like this is a karmic lesson that you're learning. And like I said, you're running at top speed. Either you've learned the lesson towards the lesson and trying to get past it and move forward. Or you're running at top speed away from it and you're not trying to learn it. But I feel like this is an unconscious action. If, it's, if it is that you're running away from it, I feel like you're doing it unconsciously. Now the thing is, that T-square goes away on the 2nd of July the day of the eclipse and the eclipse is taking place in cancer where the rules of those relationships take place it is also a new moon in cancer so it's time for new beginnings new goals new directions by realizing from what you need to change so that you can set the direction of the new goals start a brand new path a brand new pathway um what i've been tell being told telling everyone, the Spirit was telling me, is it feels like it's a new pathway of a new decision. The pathway is being created because of the new decision. Mercury is going retrograde on the 7th. Everybody is having to realize that. On the 7th is an important day. It is going to be um, 7, 7, July 7th. But 7 stands for magical creation. But with Mercury going retrograde in Leo... This could also be word vomit. So I feel like it's a very important day and make sure you, I don't want to say don't stand your ground and don't speak your truth, but I want to say ooh, you want to might want to monitor how you're saying it and make sure you're saying it properly because I feel like that's an important day that's going to help set those pathways that is moving forward. Now, before I get into the cards for you, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. A lot of this action is actually going on in your unconscious actions. It is going to be about your self-identity, your ego, your introvert side. This is your beliefs, your free will. This is also, um, how you socially speak and deal with everybody around you on the extroverted side of you. But it is inner word world situations, more private areas of your life, um, your more personal areas, which, like I said, I feel like in some cases it's, it's unconsciously doing the same things and you're trying they're trying to teach you how to get out of that so that you can start a brand new chapter but I feel like some of you aren't going to start really feeling that until you come out of the eclipse on the second uh on the ninth you have another t-square which is going to be from your self-worth to the relationship and then to the outer community so there might be some issues within that area um Yeah, your outer community, your goals, your wishes, your dreams versus the relationships and your self-worth may be going against you. On the 10th, you're going to have another T-square, which is going to be coming out of your 6th house, speaking to your ninth house, and then speaking to your uh, 12th house. So... This is going to be dealing with Mars, Mercury, and your uh, everyday daily routines and what these bad habits are that you haven't changed. 
with these bad routines, bad patterns, bad addictions that you've created, and it's going to be trying to show itself so that you can try to find healing and have your inner fire help set you free, but it's going to be something that's going to be challenging. You do have a grand trine, a water trine on the 11th, all water signs. Your fourth house, eighth house, same thing. It's going to be res responsibilities. I mean, it's going to be responsibilities within the relationships versus some of your uh, hidden information from yourself and the roots that create you to find your inner emotional security, your karmic lessons. But I feel like you're going to be finding a lot of this information from your subconscious, from your hidden self, is where your self-deception is, where, you know, you have what you have in denial, your skeletons in your closet, your self-sacrifices can also deal with prisons, government officials, government government situations. It can deal with grief, sorrow, secrets. It can even deal with suicides and murder to a point. So I feel like this is really a lot of stuff that you're learning to face yourself on and heal. And if you are doing your work and healing, then you can take that unicycle, keep it on fire, and be running in the complete positive right direction. But that all depends on you and what you choose to do with it. Because Free will's a bitch, babe. Sorry. I'm just giving you what I see. I don't try to put love on it or spin it in this direction or that direction. Because for each one of you, free will's a bitch. We choose what we're going to do and we make the decisions we make. I'm just giving you the energies and what I'm being told and allowing you to make the decisions for yourself. First thing is Mercury. This is definitely going on with communication. Let me back up for a second. Because Mercury, like I said, is in Leo. <laughs> this is your uh, ninth house. This is speaking to your higher self. You have Mars in there right now. You have Mercury in there right now. Um, or you will be come this time of July. You'll have Mars in there, Mercury. You'll also have Jura in there. Sacrifice commitment. Um, sacrifice and commitment for what it takes to get to your true higher self. To reignite your fire. To relight you in the way you need to be lit. This is also talking about your sacral chakra. About how you feel about yourself. Comfortable about yourself. Um, helping you to restand true and full in your own form. And in your own fire. And that was not my words. That was theirs. Um, this is also... How you communicate with the world outside of you as well as to you. But Mercury is going retrograde. So you are going to be definitely getting some higher informations coming in. The point is, is are you willing to listen to them and help the, the, the higher energies, your higher selves are trying to help you to see what you need to do and get closer to you and the truths of you so that you can move forward in the most healthiest way. Will you listen? That's the question. Mercury. Communication of all forms. The next one is Virgo. Virgo keeps coming up from everybody. This is being detail-oriented. This is the organizer. This is figuring it out. This is sorting through the details. Truthfully, I call her the lie detector. You can't get past the lie detector. She, she can't go from a... To C without doing B. She must do B. A, B, C. She's a virgin for crying out loud. She has to do everything right as far as organizational skills. And she's also all about her health. So this is all about health and your health, your organization of figuring out who and what you are, getting in contact with that higher self, which is your philosophy, your religion, your morals, your ethics. And what's the communication? It's really what that comes down to. Um, that's what I feel like this energy is saying. You're at as you approach July or where you at least need to be at. Earth, you must be grounded. And not only is Earth stand for grounding, but when I see Earth, <coughs> Earth speaks to me of 
the seed being planted. Not planting the seed. The seed already being planted. This is saying before the seed can grow up and out of the ground, it must spend some time in the dark earth. Communicating with yourself. Understanding what it is you truly learned about yourself as well as what you want. Figuring out how to go about it. Spending time like a meditation with yourself. Spending time with yourself. You are a seed that is growing. You haven't broken through yet is what I'm feeling. And I keep hearing, you know how I keep going, that is a, is a message from spirit too, which often for me means, um, it's like a march, like a marching. I, uh, sometimes I call it like, like a military marching. So you're being called into action. And you're being told to get your shit together, more or less, if you go all the way to the spirit. That's basically what that's saying. Neptune. This is pay attention to your magic and what you're creating. And are you creating healthy or unhealthy? Don't forget, Neptune will be in retrograde with Lilith there. So this is speaking to you of... Where is that for you? Isn't that your home? Yeah. So this is speaking to you of getting to the bottom of the roots of what created you to be who and what you are. Why? When it doesn't serve you, when it does. How is it healthy? How is it serving you in a healthy way? If it is, if it's not, how are you finding your inner security within these roots? It's also your karmic lessons, but with Lilith, Lilith here, this is also speaking to you about your own personal sexuality and how and where you take it. And how you feel about yourself. But Lilith has the power to take it from something that's positive and to take it into a whole nother bad direction. So, because, let's face it, it's Neptune and it's in retrograde. So, this is going, I'm going right up to the edge of Ego's door. I'm learning everything right up to the edge. It's up to you to know when you pushed it over. Air. This is going to be in the air. You're going to be feeling this for a while. It's going to be coming through, at least for this whole time of the 1st through the 15th. Now is what I'm being told. Anything for Saggy? Saggy. Hmm. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sun, sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for July 1st through the 15th. What's the challenge? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sagittarius. Whoa, well, that's a couple. Nope, don't trust it. Don't trust it. Not gonna work. Give me... Give me... Some deep truth, man. So that they know. Thank you. Darkening of the light. This is your... What was I just saying? This is... talk. This is basically... This is like I... Like I said, this is your challenge. Darkening of the light. The way that... This is an I Ching deck. So, this explains where you're going through. And it explains, first off what you're feeling, what that means, and then the energies that created it. It is maintaining a low profile. If you can maintain a low profile, Sagittarius, it might be helpful at this time. But this, like I said, it's the, it's the challenge. Look inward first. Caution and moderation is important. Difficulties of self-protection. I was just saying the crab was on the heart. Um... Subtle your brilliance. <laughs> Sorry, we are talking about you, Sagittarius. Subtle your brilliance. Um, this is all about to give away so that you can radiate. And what are you trying to give away? Yourself. Yourself to this world. And what is your part in it? And how are you going to radiate to get what you want? This is speaking to you of the receptive energy, yielding energy, intuitive 
but in the womb. What was I saying about the earth energy? The earth energy is like the baby in the womb. The baby is the seed that's planted, but it's not born yet. This is what we're talking about. It's also talking about as it blooms, as as the as the child is born, as the seed starts to break through the earth, we're coming into at that point what the clinging fire is, and where the radiance, and where the phoenix, the bird that was rising, comes in. This is something I feel like you're going to be working through for the whole month. This is getting back on track. This is getting back on you, getting back to you, so that. You are back on track right where you really want to be, but I feel like you're going through some deep stuff. For some of you, at least. Because, like I said, I feel like you have turned yourself into a unicycle and you are going at top speed. From something or to something. So it really depends on where your free will is. And how you choose to be open with yourself and what you're working with. You are being given also disposition. Diffuse the negativity. Restore the harmony. <coughs> harmony, not harmony. <laughs> Circulate the energy. Revitalize. Dissolve decisions. And lighten up. This is also telling you that it is influencing, dispersing, and it is penetrating. It is the f uh, it is it is the fetal energy. It's it's the baby still. It's the baby as it's being born. It's telling you that this is what you do so that you can get to where you take the risk, where you are able to face the danger, where you are able to get past the emotional difficult bullshit more or less that keeps you from pulling that crab off your heart is what I'm being given and then the small is beautiful find the extraordinary in the ordinary keep it simple use dis description slow down Tend to the details and pay attention. This is to share and to limit. This is arousing thunder. It is provoking. It is shocking. It is impulsive. But it can be disturbing because it may be something disturbing as you're changing. But it is also what was considered the birth of the dragon. Remember, the I Ching is Chinese. Um, it is maturity. It is stone. This is taking that time for the meditation. Keeping still. This is meditation. This is enduring. And this is also rest. This is telling you also, take care of you. Honey, if you don't take care of you, who the fuck is gonna? I mean, everybody else might love you and care about you. But at the end of the day... The one who never goes away is you. And you're the one who's got to live with you longer than anybody. I thought I was done. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to show you the cards and I already sort of shuffled them. I'm sorry. Um, this one. Um, excess. Stress. Overload. Exhaustion. Obsession. Gluttony. Burdens. Worries. Breaking. Point. It is influencing, dispensing, dispersing. This is the adult energy trying to snuff out the youth energy and find the pleasurable, expressive, sexual, enjoying lake. So, like I said, what was I saying in the beginning? I felt like you were going over a cliff or running up a hill and trying to go up a mountain. And then I'm seeing, like, you get there, but once you get there, it's like... Like looking out of a vacation's hotel room at the ocean and paradise, but then you couldn't stay. Why can't you stay? Why won't you allow yourself to stay? This is what you need to start asking yourself. You deserve it. Stop thinking you don't. Stop settling. Because that's what I'm feeling like I'm supposed to be saying. Stop settling, but also... 
Be willing to change and realize where you have to be responsible for the change. Reassessment. Time to take another look at the situation. There are many possibilities. However, each possibility will lead you to the same outcome. You have nothing here to lose. Um, yes, no? No. Sagittarius. What is something good that will help them throughout the 1st through the 15th of July as they come through this time? Amazement. No. Reassessment. Amazement. You have worked hard to get everything just the way it is right now. Trust and enjoy this moment. Enjoy everything is as it should be. And is there anything from my last little deck here for you to help you work through the first half of July and this first eclipse? Right before we enter the full moon and the lunar eclipse is taking place in Capricorn, which is in your self-worth, self-value, self-esteem. So I feel like this energy is all building to that eclipse to help you get on the right side of it once that eclipse happens. Is there anything here for Sedge? Well, that was just not what I was expecting. Are any of you for Sedge? Nope. Nope. You know how I am, Spirit. If it's not a high enough vibration, we're not even talking. What work daily towards improving your own mental health. They told you a million times during this reading, slow down. I love you guys. I feel like it's a very good reading. It's very much helpful and it's going to bring you to a whole new you by the end of July. I feel like the military marching, you're marching towards where you're trying to go. It just all is about free will. And are you going the right way? Bye, guys.